Okay, so now that we've kind of had that intro video to talk about words like hexose, pentose, right? Six carbon sugar, five carbon sugar, and other words like ketose and aldose, right? Uh, ketose meaning that the carbonyl is somewhere in the middle of the sugar structure. Aldose meaning you have that CHO up top, right? And the rest of the sugar that follows. Okay, so I kind of closed the video saying that there, this series is going to revolve around representing structures in a variety of different ways. And if you want to think about all the different ways uh, with carbohydrates that we can represent, and these are the ones we're going to be working with the most, right? We're going to be working mostly with aldoses and specifically six carbon aldoses, right? So hexoses. Um, we can represent them in four ways, right? Flat bond line structure, right? I'm just talking like we draw a ring like this, fill in the groups, blah, blah, blah. We can also use the chair form, right? A little throwback. We will be drawing some chairs, right? So classic kind of thing like this. We'll be doing that in this video specifically. Um, we saw this in the first video. I drew some for you. Fisher projections we'll be using a lot. And in a future video, in the next couple ones, right, you'll be looking at how to draw what are called Haworth projections. But we're not concerned with Haworth projections just yet. And to be completely honest, this the Fisher projections will not be the main focus. I kind of want to show you how to toggle between uh, how because we can draw sugars in a straight chain, or we can draw them as a ring. And I want to show you how to go back and forth between drawing the ring and uh, the straight line and kind of the, mechan the small mechanism behind it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase all this crap and bear with me. So, what I'm going to draw for you guys first is the Fisher projection of D-glucose. I drew that a lot in the first video. Right, so D-glucose. So, a little refresher. The Fisher projection looks like this. Cool. OH, 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 and OH. Last, last stereo center, OH is on the right because it is D-glucose, right? Cool, let me erase that. So, when I took organic chemistry, I told you guys that I never forgot the structure of D-glucose, the Fisher projection, or the chair form, and here's why. Uh, my shout out again, my OCHEM2 teacher, Dr. Nelson, by always telling me that D-glucose is the all equatorial sugar. And here's what I mean. This is a straight line representation of D-glucose. Now, what I'm gonna kinda show you guys over here is I'm going to draw the chair form of D-glucose. So there is a mechanistic way to get from this straight chain of six carbons to closing this kind of, it'll be like a little back biting type, back biting type mechanism. Um, this can close as a ring, and you can have uh, a six-membered ring, right? Because there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, as you'll see, six members in this ring, right? One, two, three, four, five carbons and one oxygen. And here's what I mean by uh, the all equatorial sugar. For now, I'm going to draw a squiggly line here. I'll explain why in a little bit. But D-glucose, all the groups on it are equatorial, and here's what we mean. So at this uh, peak, right, at peaks we have up axial, down equatorial. So this is an OH. I will not draw the hydrogen. All of the OHs and groups such are equatorial. At, so this is a peak. This is now a valley, down axial, up equatorial. That's where the OH goes. Go up to this peak, up axial, down equatorial. OH is equatorial. And then right here, uh, down axial, up equatorial, this is the group, right? Now, this group is kind of a carbon and an OH. This is the CH2OH, right? Because this carbon right here has two hydrogens on it and an OH. And while it doesn't look like that's how the ring would close, I'm going to show you kind of how we get from here to here. So, what I'm, what I'm going to do is the thing that is going to attack this, because remember, this is a carbonyl, right? We've attacked carbonyls all the time. Look, no, look back no further than chapter 17. All we did was attack aldehydes and ketones, right? Well, 
we can form not an acetal like we did back in chapter 17, but we can form a hemiacetal. And here's how we're going to do it. The first thing I need you guys to do, and we're going to be doing this when we do Haworth projections, is just, I think in my mind this makes a lot of sense. Let's do a double switch about this carbon, right? Double switch because we don't want to uh, invert stereochemistry. We want to keep it the same. I'm going to take this carbon right here, and I'm going to swap it with this OH right here. I'm then going to swap, uh, so the OH will be down here, the C2, uh, CH2OH will be up here. I'm going to swap the H and this group also. So here's how that will turn out. Uh, OH, H, OH, H, OH, H. Okay, so hopefully from a Fisher projection perspective, this makes sense. So all I did was switch these two groups around, right? I just did a switch and then I did another switch, double switch. Here's kind of what the deal is, right? If we can throw in some acid, right, this oxygen right here will get protonated, right? Let's just say there's some H plus floating around. This oxygen on the carbonyl will get protonated. Remember, that's how we activate our carbonyl. So let me just protonate him. Plus charge. Remember, six-membered rings, they're favorable. There's no ring strain. That's why they're everywhere in nature. So if you think about it, one, two, three, four, five, six. If we go with this OH on the bottom, what we can do is we can come around and attack and right, we would kick these electrons up onto oxygen. Now think what that does for us, right? This would be carbon in a chain, right, because now the ring is connected. This would be carbon number one, two, three, four, five, and the oxygen is, is now inside the ring. He's the sixth member, right? And if we kind of want to go through this, so what that would look like right off the bat, if we kind of draw an arrow down here before we go up to this ring here, right? This oxygen is the sixth member of the ring, right? He still has a hydrogen and now a plus charge, right? And something will clean him up. But think about it. My question to you is, when we attack this carbonyl, remember the geometry is sp2 hybridized. We are trigonal planar and flat. It does, there's no preference if we attack on top or on the bottom, right? So I use the squiggly line because we'll both have a wedge and a dash here. We'll be up equatorial and down axial uh, in, equal, in equal amounts, right? 50%. So that's why I'm, I do the squiggly line here. I just want to show you guys, I wanted to show you guys how the ring kind of closed, right? All this is, is the oxygen coming up and attacking this carbon, right? And back in Oak, uh, chapter 17, right, we would attack the carbonyl with two groups. It was an acetal. Well, now we're only attacking once. So this is what you would call a hemi-acetal, just half of an acetal, okay? So what I'm going to do now is kind of, uh, I'm going to erase some of this, and I'm going to show you not just with the Fisher projection, but with the flat line representation, how mechanistically it would look going from here to here, because filling in the rest of these groups, will uh, it's kind of a hint at hog projections. Just give me one sec. Okay, gang. So like I said earlier in the video, I'm going to kind of stress this a little bit. This D-glucose, this is, you could look at this chair conformation and say, this is D-glucose because this is, um, every group is equatorial, right? Equatorial, 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 equatorial. This makes D-glucose, if you were kind of thinking about this, a really stable sugar, right? Because we know putting groups equatorial limits uh, the strain associated in a chair conformation. Okay, so just for fun, what I want to do is I kind of want to take this and draw into a flat line structure. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a ring like this, right? And all I did was I ignored all the groups on the ring. I just put an oxygen right up top and I drew a six membered ring. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just for clarity, I'm going to number my groups. One, two, three, four, five, and six. 
So let's fill them in on the flat line structure. Two, I'm going to put the squiggly line. Because remember when this oxygen attacked that carbon, which was the aldehyde, since it's flat in sp2, there's no preference to attack on top or on bottom. Then, so here, we can do one, two, three, four, five, and six. At carbon three, right? So this is axial, or sorry, equatorial down, right? So the group is down. So moving from the chair to the flat line, this would be a dash, right? Down is down and up is up. That never changes. At carbon number four, right? Our OH is up. So that would be a wedge. Up here, five, the OH is down, that is a dash. And then up here at six, right, the CH2OH is up, right? So I'm going to make him a wedge. Okay, right, so that's how you can go from the chair to a flatline bond structure. So now I kind of want to show you guys, because I kind of did it with the Fisher projection that was a little muddy, that's just my bad, on, that's on my end. I kind of want to show you guys how to get to here from the flat line representation of a straight line uh, sugar. So let's just, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to step this back before I formed the hemiacetal. And it would look like this. my bad. Thank you for being patient. Okay. So here's what I mean. This is our Fisher projection, like the D-glucose one I've been drawing a lot, if I kind of put it almost to the ring structure. Basically, transfer the Fisher projection to a flat line bond line structure. Right? So I just want to show you guys how to get from here to here. And all you need is some acid. Okay? Because remember, in the presence of acid, we have a carbonyl right here. Remember, we can activate our carbonyls and make them more reactive, our aldehydes and our ketones, if we protonate them. Right? So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this in, uh, we'll do it in blue. Uh, pick this blue. Right? This oxygen will get protonated, right? Carbon, now protonated oxygen. I'll fill in my groups. Sorry, it takes a little bit of time. Do, 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 OH, OH, and no H. Okay, so here's what I'm saying. Right, now that he's protonated and activated, we can just attack with this OH within the molecule, intramolecularly, right? Attack that carbonyl carbon, electrons kick up onto oxygen. And here's what I'm trying to say, right? That takes us straight up to our uh, closed ring structure like this. My question is, the squiggly line is, is, such, uh, is actually there because when we attack this carbon, remember, he is sp2, trigonal planar, flat. There's no preference for that oxygen to attack on top or on bottom. And I know I've said this before, but I just wanted to kind of reiterate it because it's very important. So half the time, this OH will be a wedge. Half the time, it'll be a dash, okay? So the fact that this position has, like, you know, that uniqueness about it, this carbon right here is what is called the anomeric carbon. And this will come back. I just want to kind of introduce the top, like, the, the concept. Because he can, you know, be a wedge or a dash, we would say he is what is called anomeric. So what, we, what did we do in this video, guys? I explained it twice, but I basically wanted to show you how, given any sugar, right, doesn't have to be D-glucose, how we can draw these sugars in straight Fisher projection lines, right? But we can also draw them in chairs. And we can me mechanistically show how we form the hemiacetal that we get in this structure, right? And we can also do it in a flat bond line scenario as well. All we're doing is protonating the carbonyl and attacking within the structure. We've done this before, but now we're just doing it with sugars, okay? And remember, because he is sp2, flat, trigonal planar, when we attack with this OH and close the ring, remember, 
This is the anomeric carbon because there's no preference to attack on top or on bottom. Okay, gang, just wanted to kind of tackle this whole hemiacetal formation, right? All the time, sugars are going from the ring back to straight line, from straight line back to the ring, right? Because remember, we know we can undo this process. We can toggle back and forth. Okay, so moving forward, we're going to look at how to represent sugars. Um, we sh you know, saw a little bit of a flat bond line action here. Uh, obviously, we did the chair conformation right there. Now I kind of want to do a little bit more practice with Fisher projections and also introduce and practice a new kind of representation of sugars called Haworth projections.